quote roadies. Well, this um, segment of the podcast has been a start and stop for a couple of days. Um, I just can't even. <laughs> it's it was a cluster. It was a cluster. Yesterday was a great day. Um, it, there was no rain. Number one, my car was ready to be picked up, and um, and the car dealer is on a, a, across the river from me. Well, let me just back up. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to anybody who's new. I've got great news for everybody a little bit later on in this segment. Um, but uh, if you're new, please press the subscribe button. If you're a seasoned friend on this channel and you're not subscribed, please, please press the subscribe button because you're going to want to come December 1st. Okay, just put out that little fish hook, didn't I? What a stinker. What a stinker. I'll talk about it later. <clears throat> so I got my car back, and because I was on the other side of the river, and I hope I didn't already tell you this whole story, because I can't remember what I did two seconds ago, um, but since I was on the other side of the river, which has different shopping opportunities than this side of the river, especially in the neighborhood of my car dealer, my new favorite car dealer. Um, they did a fabulous um, fix of my car, kept me posted all along the way. Um, so I, um, you know, I know that it's a complicated world and Having gone to Trader Joe's today, looking for my favorite, favorite um, Asian mixed cracker mix that was totally out, and seeing that it costs a small fortune on Amazon, and the guy at Trader Joe's, and for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with Trader Joe's, it's, it's a really um, fun little grocery store, and... Um, they have products there uh, for everyone, but uh, really reasonable, and um, we like them. We like them. Uh, they're only about not even five miles from us down the 205. So talking to you know one of the employees there, he said, you won't find those Asian crackers anywhere. <laughs> And I said, I know, it's the way of the world, isn't it? So I'm very appreciative of my car dealer that he kept me posted. They had to order the part. And, um, you know, that they were able to get it done within a week, which has not been everybody's um, experience. So... Um, since I was doing a little shopping in the area, when I put my first shopping bag in the back, I noticed that one of the inserted covers over the battery hadn't been put back in. So I was right near the dealer. So I go back there and I'm waving at Chad, who I've been talking to. He comes out and he's very apologetic. But when I saw what he had to do to put that piece back in, I was so glad that I was still on that side of the river because I tried and I couldn't do it. Um, but I did some shopping, which I'll, I'll share with you. And I'm talking shopping like <clears throat> right on the same street is a Home Goods, a TJ Maxx, and a Joann's. Yes, yes. That's the kind of shopping I'm talking about. I, this last week, have been working on my Arvid Autumn Harvest by um, Buttermilk Basin, and I have these four sashing strips to do. And once these are done, <clears throat> I've already um, stitched all of the other blocks. So I just have these four to finish stitching, and most of them are done. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of embellishment stitching, like the veins and the leaves. 
Then what I have left are the pieced blocks. Uh, and I don't know if you can see that, but in the four corners and around the edge are half square triangles and stars. And I will have those um, pieced blocks to do, and then I'll be able to put it together. I am very much hoping that I can get this project, the top, done before the end of the year. In fact, I would like to have it done before the end of November. Um, just not sure whether that's going to work or not. Um, so I'm giving myself a little bit of leeway, because you know how the holidays get. You know, they're kind of crazy. The one thing I can suggest to you, and this is only because it works for me, is if I surround myself with um, fun beauty, I'm more likely to sit and feel good about stitching. It's kind of a weird thing, but um, there's... And having been at my friend Karen's house, you can tell that she's of that same mindset. That if your, um, your process, the process itself is beautiful, then you like kind of being with it. And so I wanted to show you this, you know, my, the, these are the, floss uh, or the Valdani threads that I need to finish up those four um, sashing blocks. And so I put them in this beautiful, beautiful beehive, uh, can you see that beehive, uh, glass that was given to me by my friend Cakers. And I have this adorable little pin, uh, wool ball pin cushion in a ceramic pot that Karen gave me sitting in there so I don't lose my needle because it just seems like lately I've been losing my needles. Not my marbles, my needles. That's not very good. Not when you have grandkids running around here. So all I'm saying is that sometimes the accoutrements of our craft are as important as the craft. Yeah. So that's what I have on the agenda. I did some uh, shopping. When I was back in Minnesota, uh, the project that Karen was working on was like right up my alley. And when we went to her friend Carolyn's house, she had the project completed and on display. And you know, if you have been around for a while, you know one of my loves is Sashiko, which is a um, Japanese form of stitching that originated with um, the concept of repairing clothing. Yeah, so repairing clothing with an aesthetically pleasing stitch. And all it is is a running stitch. It exploded. And you can go, one of the best sites to look at all kinds of Sashiko is Sylvia Pippins. And I will put the link in the drop-down box. So, um, that is like just... Um, it's another form of stitching that isn't mind-boggling because it's a running stitch. And the basic concept of it is that your stitch is equal in length and the space between your stitches is equal in length. So, you know, but I'm here to tell you, if there's a Sashiko critic out there, you need to dump them. This one I loved because it was Halloween. Halloween Sashiko. I don't know if you can see that, but isn't that adorable? And it's, it's pre-printed, which then makes it an absolute zero-brainer. And if you're like me... <laughs> You need to preserve every brain cell you have. 
And so it was pre-printed, let's see, there you can see a little bit of it, pre-printed on this black fabric. The kit included the backing, which is this adorable check, and the sashiko thread. So can you imagine this orange uh, sashiko thread? If you go to my um, Woolly Mammoth blog, I believe I might have posted a picture at Carolyn's house um, two or three blog posts ago that showed this project. Not sure, but, um, and the thing about sashiko thread, you're not splitting, you're not splitting it. Uh, it's, when it comes off the skein, that's what, what you're using. It's Egyptian cotton, so it's very, very soft. And it has just a lovely feel, like when you're using a really, awesome bar of French soap, that silky kind of, oh, this feels so good. Sashiko thread gives you that feeling as you're stitching. And the fact that this is orange on that black, black uh, project. So it'll probably be a while before I actually stitch that because, you know, the brain is already going towards Christmas. I have all my turkey things. I think next year I'm going to do my turkey stuff earlier so I can have more turkey things. I stumbled upon, um, you know, she's been off my radar just a bit, only a bit. Um, but I will, um, I'll try to post a photograph. If I can find a photograph of the two of us, I will have G post it right here. Okay, so I'm going to stop the camera so that he knows where to insert the photo because there's nothing he hates worse than when I say, I want you to insert a photo at this point in the video. And he's like, and where would that be? that G. Okay, so I'm going to stop it so he can insert the photo. Okay, <laughs> let's hope photo inserted. <laughs> I have a dear friend uh, in the stitching world who I have long admired. She is the designer and brain and talent behind Reet's Rags to Stitches. Her whimsical designs have always enchanted me. And my absolute favorite Christmas pillow was one of her designs. Uh, it was a wool design Santa. And um, when I do a Christmas um, podcast, I will um, share that pillow. But I went to her site and she had uh, some freebies that she had posted and I absolutely fell in love. Uh, she has a very whimsical design um, and she is about the sweetest person you could ever meet. If you ever go to a quilt show where there's a vendor uh, mall and she is there, you're going to want to stop and, and hang out with her. So this one is um, Elf on a Shelf Ornament. I have to, I have to make that um, for my grandkids. Look at this guy. Can you not just stand it? I mean, you can personalize it. Um, I can see me like stitching my grandson's names on the front of, like, on the front of this shirt. Um, so I, I immediately printed this off because um, so darn cute. So darn cute, and so generous of her to. And, and it's such a well-written pattern for a freebie. I mean, every step of the way. 
Um, so you're going to want to visit her site because there's going to be other things that you're going to love about it. What else? Oh, let me show you my shopping before I get into what I did next. While I was shopping, see, home sweet home, I've got my coffee. I was disappointed because one of the main things that I always got at TJ Maxx every year was kind of when you're checking out, there were these chocolate, dark chocolate spoons, um, you know, that you stir in your coffee and then the chocolate melts in your coffee. I absolutely loved those chocolate spoons and they didn't have them anywhere. It, it's kind of like my, my Japanese crackers. It's, you just wonder, um, why something is not available. And, uh, I mean, the fact that people are still worried about toilet paper flabbergasts me. But I get it. I get it because what I did was that I, on, I, I read all the comments. I don't always get a chance to respond to everyone, but I read everyone. And there was a little bit of a thread that was making me nervous, kind of like how people must feel when they start worrying about whether there's toilet paper or not. And it was about SF-101. That they were having a hard time finding it. And one of the commenters said it was backordered for quite a while in her area. Well, I, I started to hyperventilate because I was prepping a project that I used the SF-101 on and I realized I only had about a yard left on the bolt and I buy SF-101 a full bolt every time I buy it and I've gone through at least three bolts already. It's because it's kind of a go-to product for me um, in my wool world I use it all the time and in my embroidery in now with my cross stitch I kind of use a lot of it so the concept that there would not be SF 101 available kind of like parts for cars I I my 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 crafty heart started doing the pitter-patter so when I went to the other side of the river to collect my car I was going to stop at Joann's because that's where I usually buy the bolt. And Joann's has always had a system where if you buy a full bolt of something, whether it's a full bolt, unopened bolt of fabric or a full bolt of SF-101 or any kind of interfacing, you automatically get 40% off even if there isn't a sale. So it's always been worth it for me to get the bolt because I do go I've gone through the bolts well when I went in to Joann's there was a sign hanging up in the interfacing that said 50% off and I was like holy moly so I went to the um, person who was working that area of Joann's and I said do you have a full bolt of SF 101 and she said well let me check and she said we should have one let's look around the you know the stand and see if there's something that's still shrink wrapped and sure enough there was and I said oh good 50% off and she goes no no, 40% off. And I said, oh, the sign right here says 50% off. And bless her heart, she said, oh, we forgot to take that down, but I will give it to you. Isn't that nice? That's so nice. So I got my still shrink wrapped because I'm on the last yard of the SF-101. And, um, yeah, I just, I use that all the time. It's a Pellon product. Since I was at Joann's to get the the SF-101, 
I um, looked through many other things. I picked up that issue. Um, I had I had thought I wasn't going to get this issue. I had looked at it before, but it had that cute B in it for those of you that have it. And oh, there's this adorable little owl on top of a on top of a, a box. But what really got me. Um, oh, let me see if I can find. Oh, there it is. Oh, I just was this quilt. Isn't that gorgeous? It's just gorgeous. Um, so I figure if there's more than a couple of projects in here that um, that I like, then it's worth getting the magazine just for the just for the uh, enjoyment just for the enjoyment of looking see here look I'm I'm taking time <laughs> I'm getting distracted oh my gosh is that oh I wish I could make dolls look at that wool raggedy doll is he absolutely adorable? Oh. Got the magazine. I've been decoupaging like crazy, so I figured I needed more of these brushes. And because I have the Joann's app on my phone, I, um, you know, you get a discount when they have a sale. And then, here's this twine. You know, I, I've i been using that little tool to make twine. But here are three spools that are Christmas related that I can use for my Prairie School of Santa ornaments. Or any ornaments that I have. So I bought that pack. And, I mean, I don't know why, but they were so freaking cute. They're, they're tiny. They're just tiny. They're tiny little things. I just thought they'd look cute on something or just in a jar. They are so cute. And then beads for my counting pins and um, cross stitch. And these are slices of strawberries. So that was my Joann's haul. But I'm here to tell you that uh, the SF-101 was the big thing of the day. So I went to TJ Maxx and Home Goods to try to find my chocolate spoons for those dark chocolate spoons for when people come over or myself, but when people come over and have coffee, because you have that dream of having people come over and have coffee, and that they would have a chocolate spoon to stir their coffee, which I did not find. But I did find some other things. Now, these cups and the reason, I mean, it was on sale for $4, gee, many Christmas, are these espresso cups. And, you know, I use these espresso cups to make pin cushions. Any espresso cup size makes an awesome, fun little pin cushion. And I thought they were... I thought they were so fun, and they were on sale. And naturally, they stack everything on the way out. Uh, you know, the checkout stand at these places is like the line at Disneyland, you know, where it snakes around, because they're going to sell you last-minute stuff all the way to the checkout. And, yes, I did succumb to that, because why not? 
when I, I like the spool for one thing, but it's this wooden spool, and on it is this beautiful sparkly twine, and it was called Martha Stewart Home. Isn't that cool? So I have twine that I can use, or if I don't want to, I mean, I could actually mount a pin cushion up here. Oh, it, the mind boggles. See, that's the thing. When you hang around crafters, um, which is what Minnesota is filled with crafters, you are going to, yeah, you have no way of not getting, um, it, they think that coronavirus is infective. Oh, man, crafters are even even more so. I did get my booster shot this week, so I'm I feel like I'm all set for the holidays. That the holidays might for me be as close to normal as possible. Although I have three grandsons that aren't old enough. Um, well, I think they're. Yeah, two of them aren't even old enough. One is old enough, but it might be, it has to be a decision with his mother. So, you know, it's, it, it's what it is. But I'm just saying that I'm trying to, I'm trying to embrace a holiday that might be as close to the, the, the Christmas movies. <laughs> you know, G can't stand that there's Christmas movies on right now. He cannot stand that. He does not want to at all be looking at Christmas movies. And he doesn't like those cookie cutter ones. He likes the, we have a whole set of the funky ones. So we're, we're going to be um, enjoying those. I, I had it in my head. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? I had in my head when I came home that I wanted to have a Christmas wool stitch ready to go. And what that means is, for me, is having it prepped all the way to the point of where all I'm doing is stitching. Part of seasonal stitching for me is what gets me in the mood and makes me happy. So I knew that I had to have a, a seasonal stitch ready to go. And, oh, I just want to, I'm going to go, just go get something so that I can show you. Sorry for the, for the disruption, but I'm not going to stop the video. I'm still here. I'm still here. So penny rugs are a simple way to um, make gifts for someone else or yourself to um, get you in the mood for a certain holiday or a feel-good moment. Penny rugs are great, and they are basically a standard size. They're several standard size. So what I always have on hand is a pre pre-cut out template out of freezer paper because generally any table topper is going to be a certain consistent size, if that makes any sense. So I keep under my cutting mat consistent sizes of freezer paper templates because I know a lot of them are this size. A lot of them are this size. And I don't want to keep recreating the wheel. And many are this size. And then there's some that are this size. So I take the work out of it by making a freezer paper template that I just keep under my cutting mat for whenever the mood strikes me. And the mood struck me. 
So uh, let me show you these penny mints. These were ones that friends made for me. Um, I used to belong to a group in sisters called the So-and-So Sisters, and it is um, it was such a pleasure because you could probably go back maybe two years or more um, where I did a, um, a sewing room tour of Linda's sewing room. It's... Um, she is she embraces all kinds of crafts and um, she also had a stitch group that was at her house and so one year every year we had something different that we did and one year we made um, penny rugs for each other and so these were the ones that were made so this was Linda made this one so this one doesn't even have to sit on the table. I could hang this on, on the wall as a decoration. So-and-so sisters. This one I made. So this can sit on a table with a candle mat or a pin cushion. And this one my neighbor Suzanne made for me. Isn't that adorable? So they make really great gifts, and for yourself or your friends. Well, that's why I thought I need to get in, uh, have something ready to get into the holiday mood. Um, someone posted on Facebook, according to your birthday, maybe something like that, some some reason, you when should you decorate for Christmas? And mine, uh, what they posted, it said, I should decorate for Christmas the day after Thanksgiving. I'm all about that. I'm all about that. And who am I to uh, dispute one of those um, quizzes on Facebook? You know, yeah. So I need to get started. And I have a round dining table. And I thought, oh, it would be fun to have a brand new penny mat that is a little bit on the larger side. So I um, I found, I had bought it when I was in Minnesota, and I stopped at Buttermilk Basin. And let me tell you, bucket list. I know I keep saying that, but bucket list. She, Stacy West, is not only an amazingly creative designer, but she really needs her own home decor magazine because her displays in the shop are jaw-dropping. It is so much fun to shop in there and just to hang out in there. But when I, I had some of the ugly sweater ornaments already that I had not made yet, but I really loved this. Now these things in the center are actual bulbs. They're not part of the design. So this would sit on a table like with a candle or a bowl in it. And isn't that cute? That is so cute. Um, so I had to, I had to um, get it out and get it prepped. So I'm going to just talk you through my prepping process. Um, I hope you have something to drink and something to snack on because this is going to be a little bit... Okay. So I already knew that I had a pre-cut out size because I could tell by the pattern that it was going to be one of those standard size patterns. So what I did was, let me just show you here, is that, see this is SF101 on the back, is I took this, this pattern that I had, And I traced it, I traced it with a pen on the smooth side of the SF-101. SF-101 has a bumpy side and a smooth side, and the bumpy side is the stick'em side. 
that's an that's a real world word stick them so i traced this onto a piece of sf 101 and then i rough cut the square out and i fused it on the back of the wool the black wool that i had Once it was fused on there, then I fine cut it out. So I had had a, a good um, a good piece of wool and SF101 together in the shape that I needed. Because sometimes the reason I use SF101, and it, it wasn't a problem with this wool, but um, wool can be kind of stretchy, and the SF101 keeps it from getting misshapen or stretched out when you're stitching through it. it. It's just a way to keep the integrity of the shape of the piece, if that makes sense. So once I had that all cut out, then it was time to cut out all the pieces of wool that go on this pattern for the sweater. So you can see all of the little pieces that are going to be needed. Because like this sweater here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces to it. They're not very big, but they're all all pieces. So <clears throat> what I do, I hope you're not bored with this, but I use soft fuse. And the reason I use soft fuse it, it, as a fusible is because for me, it has proven to be the most successful. Of course, I use steam with it. It says you don't have to, but I'm here to tell you, I steam both sides of my projects. I don't want to lose all those pieces. And I sometimes am stitching in an airport or in the car, and they come off. It, it, you know, if you're just having them in a baggie and putting them on one at a time, uh, it can't work for me. I need to have the overall picture. SF-101 is a kind of a spendy product, but I save every piece. So this is a piece left over from all of those sweaters. And you think, oh, why are you saving that piece? Well, if you look at the size of this, if I wanted to make um, ugly sweater ornaments, I could probably fit two or three more ornaments on this little piece. See? So I have a box of remnants of SF-101 and a box of remnants of, um, oh no, I just said that backwards, didn't I? Scratch that! I have a box of remnants of soft fuse and I do have a box of remnants of SF-101 because sometimes you just need a little tiny piece and if you see these sweaters, there's just little tiny pieces. Just little tiny pieces. Which brings me to my wool. For my big pieces of wool, I store them in drawers uh, according to color. So I will have big pieces of black and white together, red, orange, yellow together, green, blue together, um, and they're in big plastic drawers. But I also save every little piece of wool. So in these bins, these are just little bins, are all the little pieces of wool. If you can figure out how you want to store them, you must. Wool's expensive. And you don't need a lot of it for projects. So if you're looking at this project, you just need little tiny pieces. So I save little tiny pieces. That could be a leaf. That could be a bulb. Um, you know, I'm... I'm constantly, so I keep these color coordinated. So here's the blue and green. I have red, orange, gold, brown, um, black, white, all the little pieces I'm keeping 
and I have literally done this entire project from the little pieces. The only piece I used a big piece was the black. Where do I get my wool? You might ask. <laughs> I think I hear someone asking. Everywhere. Now my favorite local place to get wool is Pioneer Quilts. They have hand dyed wool that is, oh, and they have so many kits. Oh, the kits are uh, fabulous. So if you don't have a big stash of wool, a kit is a way to start. But you'll have a lot left over. If you're, if you kind of place your pieces on your piece of wool frugally, you'll have a lot of a, a lot of little piece wool stash started and then you start saving them and you build and you build and you build. Um, you can get many kits from Buttermilk Basin. You can get many kits from Farm Girl Dry Goods or Primitive Gatherings. There's a lot of places. I love hand dyed or um, I'm not as a, a big fan of felt because it's too flat for me, although some people like it. So there's there's no you know wool rule, wool rule. Uh, it's what you like and what you want your project to look like. Now if you're allergic to wool, you can use flannel. This can be done in flannel. This whole project can be done in flannels with the same technique as the wool and you're going to stitch it just like you would the wool. You're going to use the same soft fuse, the SF-101, and it'll look just as adorable because there are some amazing flannels. Bonnie Sullivan, uh, all through the night, her line of flannel is just yummy. Yummy. So just because a product project says it's a wool project, some people are very allergic to wool and you can do it in flannel. I taught a wool class at Quilters Affair in Sisters, Oregon, and uh, one lady was allergic to wool and she brought her flannel stash. One lady did it all in cotton. You know, it's it's your project and no one's the boss of you especially no one's the boss of me. And it doesn't take big pieces of wool either. Um, the stitching post carries lovely wool because Sue Spargo does a lot of teaching there and her wool is rich and vibrant. Um, so it kind of depends on the look that you want. So let me just show you what I did. I I fused, I drew all my pieces onto the soft fuse. And then I laid out all my little scraps of wool, white, green, the different colors of green and red, and some of them are just tiny little scraps. And then I laid all my pieces out. And then I fused them down. Then I turned all the wool over and I fused from the back. I steamed. I just steamed it from the back. And then I cut out the, all the pieces. And my favorite wool scissors are Kai scissors. They're made of steel, made in Japan. And the Stitch and Post sells these. These are the five inch, and then I have the three and a half inch are the two ones that I use the most. And it's because it has a very, very fine serrated edge that just cuts wool like butter. So here we go. So this piece here, everything is fused on, ready for stitching. I haven't started stitching yet, but it's all ready. You see, all the pieces are on there. The way I approach my wool stitching is I'm going to first stitch all those little gold gobby things. I will tend to stitch 
everything little first because if anything is going to come loose which is very very rare it'll be something little so I tend to do that first and I tend to stick to a color and like this um, deer, deer head here I'll stitch him at the beginning because then he holds the piece below him onto the mat <clears throat> all these white pieces stitch those first because they'll hold the sweater on <coughs> excuse me so I'm all ready for this ugly sweater mat to be ready for this Christmas I am I so I so want to have this on my dining table yeah something new I want something new on my dining table so don't let um, don't let things seem overwhelming and talk you out of it. All those little pieces, and I did not, um, I did not buy a kit. These were all little scraps of wool that I had in my stash. I did not buy a kit, although I'm pretty darn sure that you can get a kit. And usually, when you get the kit, it's exactly. Uh, the same fabrics as she used. This, on the other hand, is all scraps out of my stash. Once everything is stitched down, then I'm going to put a backing on it. And I usually fuse a backing on there because I don't want it flopping around. And then I buttonhole around the whole outside edge. Now, my friend Robin, she's taken to actually putting binding around the edge of some of her mats, but I just like to do the buttonhole. Was that just exhausting to hear about? Let's see, is that all, all we have to talk about today? Yes, I guess that's all we have to talk about. So, I hope you do some shopping. I hope you enjoy... Uh, if, if this will be your first plunge into wool, I hope you enjoy it. It is um, one of those crafts that is relaxing because um, the primitive wool stitching basically only uses either a buttonhole um, or a whip stitch. And my whole thought process about it is that it's primitive. So if things aren't perfect, oh well. It still looks gorgeous. And no one's going to be standing around your table going, oh, this stitch is not as close as this stitch. No, they're going to look at that overall project and say, wow, how beautiful is that? How beautiful you are for having created it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, I hope you have a nice rest of the day. I am going to be just stitching away in the beehive and looking forward to the next time we meet. It's a rainy day here, and I'm going to enjoy every moment. Thank you for stopping by. Be sure you click that subscribe. Oh, and I forgot to tell you on why you want to subscribe. On normally, here's a whole nother story. Normally, I do a 12 Days of Christmas giveaway on my blog. I think I've always done it on my blog. But this year, for a variety of reasons. And normally what I'm giving away is generally patterns that I'm done with um, that I want to pass on. You know, it's it's no big deal, but it's so fun for me. And for those of you that uh, like the same things I like, you know, it's a way to, you know, get a pattern or whatever. And I usually do um, that 12 days. This year is going to be entirely different. Mainly because, for one thing, I am in a different home and there isn't a post office 
like really close to me. And besides the fact that just getting things mailed is a, a challenge. So what I plan to do is on December 1st, yes, I am going to do 12 giveaways on that day. <clears throat> and that's going to be for, um, you know, patterns that I have, um, fun things that I'm passing along. But <clears throat> the creme de la creme is that Yazzie Bags has offered a Yazzie Bag, one of their Yazzie Bags of their choice, to one of you. And it's, uh, unfortunately for Yazzie, because of the whole postage thing, the Yazzie bag will be for U.S. Um, citizens only. Um, but the rest of the, the, the other 11 things that I'm giving away on that day, because that day is going to be all about the giveaway, it'll be for anywhere in the world. So anyone can enter. The only requirement is that you be a subscriber. That's the only requirement to this. And there's no, there's no downside to you subscribing. And if you subscribe and then click that little bell next to the subscription button, it just lets you know when I do another video. So that will all work out. So be prepared for December 1st. If you haven't subscribed already, you're going to want to before then because I will be checking those subscriptions um, and to see who has subscribed and who hasn't that enters the giveaways. And I'll, I'll have it all worked out how those giveaways are going to be done. So stay tuned. In the meantime, please subscribe, like, and I hope the rest of your day and week is awesome. Love you guys.